Hey, this is Dave Haas, and we are here at the Bottom Lounge in Chicago. Uh, me and the Mermaid are on a tour with Frank Aero and the Patients, and uh, we're going to go over the gear I use on tour on stage. Let's begin. Uh, this is my main guitar on this tour. It is a 2003 Gibson Melody Maker. Uh, my snobbier guitar playing friends uh, unkindly refer to this guitar as a toy. Um, but I like that about it. It's very simple. It's just a, a piece of wood with a P90 pickup on there from uh, Seymour Duncan. And these things are super cheap, super light. They're kind of a struggle to keep in tune, a struggle to play, but they are, uh, they look cool. And if I break it, I'm not super worried about it. Just, there's my uh, Red Fox pin. Um, I use Ernie Ball strings. They're kind enough to give us the strings for, uh, you know, as part of like a artist thing, you know? So it saves us money on tour, which is cool. The gauge is 11, and uh, I usually pin the tone almost all the way like this. Sometimes roll it off a little bit if it's too trebly, but I can do that with my amp too. And the volume I control according to the song, you know, whether or not you need full teeth or uh, something more mellow. So this is my main on this tour, but they sort of always change. Um, I, I sort of I started playing this uh, when the new record came out in February, and I've been playing it uh, for the, for these couple months. This is a backup guitar. Um, my friend Dan Andriano, who is in Alkaline Trio and who I'm in the Falcon with, uh, built this guitar out of um, I think it's a '59 body and a '63 neck, or or that's reversed. I wanted to get a strap that looked like Jimi Hendrix's strap. Although I don't play uh, left-handed, obviously, um, and he had this, he had built this, and uh, I think the body was uh, relicked in the fender shop, and then he relicked the neck, and uh, so it's super cool. Um, he named it the Radicaster because uh, he, as well as a lot of other friends, uh, commonly referred to me as the Philly Rat, the survivor from Philly. Uh, so he put Radicaster right on there, and yeah, Dan put this all together. I think these are Lawler pickups that he put in here. I can't remember, but uh, I use this on a couple songs every now and again, and I usually just pin it all um, and use the middle position for like resolutions. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else I've used this for. Uh, Kaylee, our keyboard player and sometimes guitar player, uses this a bunch too. Um, so yeah, that's the Radicaster. This guitar is a 12 string Rickenbacker that I bought while we were on tour with Bad Religion and Against Me in uh, the fall of 2016. We did a big long tour together and you've got Brian Baker on that tour. You've got Mike, the Bad Religion guitar player as well. You've got Jimmy James, you've got Lara Jane Grace and they're all super into guitars. And so Tim and I being on that tour got super amped on buying guitars, and this was one of the guitars I bought towards the end of that tour. Um, the other thing was we made our new record with Eric Bazilian and William Whitman, and they have all these old, amazing 60s ricks. So uh, I needed to make sure I got a 12 string, and this is from the 90s, actually I bought it off of a Beatles fanatic in Phoenix that didn't want to ever ship it because he knew that the guitar was so nice, he was afraid that if he shipped it at all, it could damage it. So. Uh, I picked it up right at his house, and uh, it plays great. There's two two um, truss rods in it. Kaylee also plays this more than I do because um, we don't really have a tech right now, so it's just faster if I if I play my main. But I'm always jealous that she gets to play this thing. I mean, it sounds really good when it's not even plugged in. That's how you often know a guitar is great. Um, so it plays well. It stays in tune pretty well for a Rickenbacker and for a 12 string, and so this is like a prize guitar. This guitar is actually called the Bishop. And the strings on this, uh, the strings that came on this, we left on as long as we could. They were flat wounds. I'm not even sure what gauge they were. Um, and we're still working with Ernie Ball to determine what we're going to use on these. Uh, they sent us a 12 string 
pack it in nine and in 11. So they're nine zone here now, but they're not flat wound. So um, Ernie Ball's working on getting some flat wound strings uh, in a nine and a 12 string pack that we can use on tour. Um, so yeah, I mean, flat wounds I think sound the best, especially on, on these 12 strings, but we'll see what they can get for us. This is my telly. I played this on, like towards the end of the set. I played this a bunch in the Falcon last year. This is made by Nash Guitars. And um, yeah, this thing can take a real beating and has taken a real beating. I've only had it for a little while. It's got the most comfortable neck of any guitar I've got. Um, you could throw this guitar down a flight of steps and it'll still um, play well and sound great. There are Lawler pickups in there. Um, again, I do the same thing with volume as I do on any other guitar. Just adjust it according to what I need. And, uh, you know, oftentimes you're right here. And if you need to really go up um, and give all the bite that you can get out of the amp, then you uh, pin the volume all the way up. Um, so yeah, this guitar, I wish I played more, but I guess when we're headlining, I'll probably I'll switch back and forth more and, and play this. This is a great guitar made by Nash, who's like, why do they do such a great job? All right, and the last one, um, I've got a bunch of acoustics. My favorite acoustic is my Martin D35 that I leave at home now, because I've written so many songs that, that uh, are, you know, memorable to me, so I leave that thing at home so it doesn't get all fucked up because I make a mess of my guitars and beat them into submission. Uh, this guitar was loaned to me by Martin. Uh, this is, a, what is it exactly? It's an OM21 Special. Uh, I knew it was an OM21. I forgot about the special part. Um, yeah, this thing is a, more of a parlor size than I'm used to. I was taking out dreadnoughts and found them to be more and more cumbersome. And now that we're playing as a band, I don't need as much of that Canon kind of boom. I just need a, an acoustic guitar that uh, feels good, that I can uh, play easily. And there's a little bit of finger picking on the headline shows that I'm trying to get into and they're a little easier on these OM21s. So they loaned this to me and I'll eventually give it back. The strings on this one are, I think they're 12s. They're medium, they're also Ernie Ball, they're earth wound, um, they're, they're like warmer acoustic strings. And uh, yeah, and they, they do the job for sure, they're great. Um, the guitar strings that I've been putting on my other guitars are these classic rock ones, they're called. And uh, they're just a little less bright and you know, what we're doing is essentially trying to Okay, and speaking of classic rock, uh, this is my deluxe reverb from 1965. Uh, it's my, you know, it's the secret. If you want a really good tone, buy a really good amp. And they made really good amps in 1965. It's blackface. Um, it's been sort of uh, just tightened up in terms of the wiring by a guy called George Alessandro out in suburban Philadelphia. And uh, he just sort of got it road, road ready so that um, it was a little bit more reliable. Sometimes these old amps, you know, there's little uh, transistors and little solder joints and things like that that can slow you down. I mean, I've, had, I've probably put about $1,000 worth of repair work and stuff into it in the first year I had it. And he got a hold of it and was like, look, I'll do some stuff to it that just makes it road ready. So yeah, this is it. Um, my dad had one of these when I was a kid, and uh, so it, you know, little did I know that my dad had one of the most like, desirable Fender amps that you can find, and uh, and so naturally I, you know, when I was starting to really tour solo, and I was ramping back the guitar tone in terms of like not wanting tons and tons of gain. That's what I used to do, sort of in the loved ones, was like a Marshall Jubilee and a Marshall 800, but. Uh, Doing solo stuff, I just wanted a warm, like bass-driven, clean tone that breaks up right, uh, you know, right between three and four is usually the sweet spot. And uh, so I bit the bullet and bought myself an old tube amp and served me well. So um, usually this is the way it's set. Um, clearly we're in the backstage. It's just set up for this beautiful special that we're doing. Um, but this is sort of the way I dial it in to start. Usually about 
between three and four it starts to break up nice. It depends on the room. If the room's bigger, then you can get more out of it. If the room's smaller, you want to leave uh, a little bit of room and then adjust it on your own, you know, your guitar volume. The treble I usually have around four, bass around eight, and the reverb around two. But I think all that is dependent on the amp, you know. Um, each of those amps has its own little ghosts and own little proclivities and stuff, so you just have to get to know your amp and see what sounds best, and know how your fingers work and all that kind of jazz. Oh, these picks we just got uh, from the pick guy. Um, they have our little Bury Me in Philly logo on them and DH, Dave Haas. Uh, and uh, they are, I think, they're, what gauge are they? They're like 0.5 millimeter, 0.05 millimeter, I don't know. They're these thin little easy ones. They help me not hammer the guitar as hard. Um, I used to play with a lot of harder picks. I used to play a lot harder, but when you get older, you start to realize the, the lighter you play, the better it sounds. The pedals that are not here are, um, let's see, I have an Ernie Ball volume pedal just to kind of help control how much tone is going to the amp, or how much signal, I guess. Uh, I have one of those little exotic boosters to try to get up and over. I have a Crybaby Wah pedal that I use, you know, maybe every third show on one song. Uh, I have a Maxon analog delay to fatten up the sound a little bit. Um, what else do I have? I have a Seymour Duncan uh, analog delay as well, just for extra, like, more textural stuff, like to weave songs together. And, uh, oh, and a Red Llama pedal for extra boost. So that's made by Dunlop, I think, or it was. Uh, it's one of those big red uh, metal boxes, and that thing, you know, I got it because Mike Campbell has one, and Mike Campbell's the best. Uh, it's the Lone Ranger and Tonto. My uncle gave me those when I was a little kid. I was like six, so I've had them for over 30 years. And uh, they just sit up there. And they're just, you know, up there showing friendship. And there's Han Solo and Princess Leia. I got them down at the shore this past holiday with my nieces and nephews. Um, this is, again, that's Red Fox, my favorite comedian, along with Don Rickles. My buddy Colin made that, and he makes these little stained glass, uh, uh, stained glass things, and it says, you big dummy on the back for Dave Haas, my homie. Uh, my friend Colin, I've known since we were, like, little kids, and, uh, he made that for me. And then this is a plaque that was given to my grandpa when he retired from Arco. Um, after doing 43 years of work there. So that's sort of up there just to remind you, like, you could be working in, a, in an oil field, but you get to play guitar. So, like, you know, little, uh, little things to remind you of home and to remind you of people that you love and then inspire you and stuff. Sort of help create a bit of a vibe when you're in a foreign place every single day. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for looking at all this gear. My name's Dave Haas. The website is DaveHaas.com. And the record is called Bury Me in Philly. You can find it wherever records are streamed or found or sold. Uh, yeah, come see us on the road. That's the best place for music anyway.